You don't play with an evil person. Because an evil person, as this person said, will damage you. You understand? You see? And, and you, you, you play with, um, with certain animals and you play with them. They might seem playful for a while afterward. Then the same animal will devour you. Okay? Because it's nature. It's evil. And so the people will play with the devil. But as I said, back to the dragon thing. That the dragon is symbolic of the devil. Right? And the scripture tells you that this is where the war started. The desire for power. Okay? It wasn't because you wanted food. Right? <coughs> you know, because if I, if I, if I, um, if, if I had my food put on here and somebody came and was hungry <coughs> and somebody ate it, and, I, and he said, excuse me, sir, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, but I was so hungry, uh, you know, I, I wanted something to eat and I ate it. Well, I would have to try to get some other food, but if he was hungry, what are you going to do? If I was saying, it's like eating the problem, so you don't despise a thief, even steal for that satisfying and so on. Because if you're not hungry, what do you expect he's going to do? Right? He's stealing food, right? And eat the food. Right? But, the, but if, if it were, and if it, and it, if it, if it were a matter of, of gold or silver or your car or something like that, there would be a different story. Because that's not something for the satisfying your soul. But even then, what I'm saying, the matter of war is about power to want to control that when I say you do, Okay? When I say you do, and you do, and it's a matter of terrorizing people. Because you ask yourself sometimes, why? Why do you do it? Right? So you give them money, or you give them gifts, or whatever, and let them terrorize other people, and they do it in their, in their name. And as I said, many of these people, like, I, I'm almost sure Hitler never killed a Jew. I'm almost sure he never actually shot one. Never stabbed one. He gave the order, and others gladly went about it. Okay, they also will have greater damnation. They will have greater damnation in time to come because they didn't have to obey the order that was evil. So I say this that the scripture said. Let me go back to Revelation chapter twelve, and the scripture said the dragon was cast out, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven. Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of its Christ for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which is which accused them before our God day and night um, before our God day and night and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony and they loved not their lives unto the death then he said therefore rejoice ye heavens and he that dwell in them, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. All right, and the scripture tells you, and there's a there's a verse here which I want to read here. Uh, go back to verse nine. So the great dragon was cast out. That's the dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. So all those names belong to one person. Right? Dragon. Old serpent. Right? Devil and Satan. They're all the same person. Right? At one time, he was Lucifer. And a beautiful name. Because those days he was living a beautiful life. But when he became a rebellious, he became rebellious, then he lost all of that, okay? The Bible tells you of Esau, right? He was the first of two children that Isaac and Rebekah had. And he was supposed to get the birthright, right? Because he was the first. But one day, <coughs> Jacob wanted the birthright because Jacob realized there was a great a, a lot to gain from having the birthright. And when he when when Esau came home, wanted something to eat, he's hungry, he said like, you know, my um 
He said, sell me your birthright. Right? Jacob shouldn't have done that, really. But I'm just saying that. You know, that was a hard deal. He was trying to bargain with him. But, but I'm saying, even then, Esau should have rejected it. Because he said to him, I'm, I'm, I'm sell me your birthright. He said, my soul is at the point to die. And what is this birthright going to do for me anyway? Just, all right, grab the birthright. Just give me some food. All right? Now that's the reason why he got rejected. Because he took something that was sacred. Something that was, I mean, eternal. And he just cast it in the, in, in, in the, in the waste basket. As my dad would say, he threw it in the trash. That's what they say nowadays. Threw it in the trash. He said, this, is like, this doesn't mean anything really to me anyway. As long as I get some food right now. And so he, he showed um, um, disdain for something that was sacred and something that was holy. That's what I'm trying to say. You see? So the Bible tells you that Satan had a beautiful name, but the same thing he did. And, and, and Esau, as I'm just saying, he followed the same thing. His name, the Bible says, is Edom. The day he did that, the day he despised his brother and sold it his brother, he didn't just say, the Bible says, sell his brother, he despised it. Because he said it like trash. What am I doing with this? I don't care about it. I'll just give me some food. Right? And then his name was changed to Edom. His honorable name was, in other words, you ever talk about it, it was stripped of his honor, stripped of his robe, stripped of whatever. Everything was taken out from him that day. That was it. So the same thing happened to Satan. His Lucifer, his dignity, his honor, all of those things were taken out from him when he rebelled against God. Because he did not care about the glory and the honor that the Almighty had given to him. He just wanted if he could just have the power and to be like God. Yes, but he was like God. How much more do you want to be like God? And you want to be that you are God? You can't do that. Because every child of God, every angel is like God. Right? Every angel was made like God. I mean, you have a nature, you are, I mean, you are, uh, you, you are celestial. They are celestial. They are like God. They are spirits. So they are like God. And even we today in the flesh, we are like God. Right? Made after the image of God. So, but, but we can't be God. That's the thing. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? The car is made by Henry Ford. Excuse me. But the car can't be Henry Ford. So even though you see somebody say, what kind of car do you drive? It's a Ford. Right? It has the name Ford on it, but it's not the man who made it. It cannot be the man who makes it. Right? It only bears his name. Right? So I'm saying really, so you can't be God. Right? And today when Satan came into this world, you know, in the kingdom and domain of, of the Almighty, there's only one God. And the angels regard him as one. Just one God, the Most High God. But in the kingdom of the devil, he's considered himself a God, and all of these devils consider themselves as gods. Right? So all of them want to be worshipped. All of them are clamoring for the very same thing. Okay? And in order to get people from worshipping God, they tell them must build idols, wood and stone and all these things, and bow down to them, and make a mockery out of them, and make them look stupid and laugh at them. Right? And say, I mean, look, look at them. Look at what they're doing. Right? Turn them into birds and, and all these things and beasts and all these things. And tur turn them into evil looking creatures. They go flying and broom and all these things going places, doing devious things against people. Right? And these things they feel that, like, well, some of them feel it's an honor, but the devil knows that he has actually, you know, taken away whatever honor that God gave them. And he's actually rubbing them on the dirt. You see what I'm saying? Right? I stripped them of whatever glue they have. Right? The Bible tells you, you know, 
that when Israel made a golden calf, they thought they were just making an idol to worship. But, the apostle, the, but David, when he, he looked at it, he said, they changed their glory to that of an ox that feed it, eat it grass. In other words, they, they brought themselves down from being the honor of being human beings to be like a, like let's say, like a jackass, you know, like a, a, a cow or, or, out in the field. You see, that's how he said they changed their glory. So what God had given to them, they dumped it, right? And Satan dumped the glory that God gave to him in heaven, right? And became, I mean, Lucifer dumped the glory that God gave to him, became Satan, the dragon, then he comes to the earth and doing the same thing to people. They let them dump the glory that God gave to them and he make them into birds and all and this despicable creatures, right? So the Bible tells you, <clears throat> this is where the whole thing of war started, right? And in order for you to have a war, there must be a wrong side and a good and a bad side, a good side and evil side, okay? But where God is concerned, it wasn't a matter of a, so much of a, um, Satan had the, the evil side, okay? Satan had the wrong side, okay? Because he thought to do something that was wrong. Satan tried to do something that was evil, okay? It didn't prevail in heaven and the Lord cast him out. Then the Bible tells you that he came down to earth. What did he come down here to do? To, to set up a kingdom. But Jesus came to abolish that kingdom, to destroy that kingdom, that Satan should not reign in any part of the universe that he had created. Alright? So the Bible tells you about Armageddon and it tells you that there will come a time when all of these things will come to an end. Many wars have been fought upon the earth. And if you follow the devil, there will be wars here upon earth constantly. And I can say to some degree that there has always been some war. And you might be in a corner right now saying to yourself, well, no war is going to come here. As I said, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, <clears throat> that the United States has been very clever in trying to keep the war on the other side of the globe and not on our shores of the Atlantic, not on our shores of the Pacific. And all the nations on this side of the world I have to thank the United States for that. Okay. But they are always sending people over the other side of the world to fight, sending them over there to fight. But the nations which have risen up now, they have realized to themselves that, well, the United States, they're not getting this antagonism as we are getting over the other side of the world. And we want to antagonize them over this side too. So they have made weapons, right, missiles. And their only aim is to get to this other side of the world. Where, and they say, we don't have to send a ship over here. Because if we send a ship, they might sink the ship before it even reaches here. Okay? If, if, if we try to send a plane, they might shoot on a, shoot on a plane before it even gets here. But we can send a missile. <clears throat> and we can send it in such a way that they wouldn't even know until when. It hit them on the shore. I don't know if, and I hope, I hope that you're following what's going on with the war that's going on in the Ukraine. It doesn't start yet, but it, it's set. And the government is telling the people out there, what America is, to leave. They say that if you get trapped down there, we cannot deliver you. Right? And, and President Biden was asked about it. Why? Because there was American wherever they are, there we go. He said, this time, he said, we're not, we're not coming for you. It's too dangerous. He said, if you get America and Russia shooting against other said, the world will be a different place from what it is. Okay? Because each one is going to seek to outgun the other. And it will be desolation. It's bad enough as it is. Now, you must, you must understand that all of these things were written in the scripture. And many of these things, we spoke about them. I was learning these things when I was young in the church. We used to discuss them. And some of those people who we discussed these things were 
discuss these things with a pastor and, and God. My daddy especially used to teach about these things. Right? He's pastor and God. But he knew certainly that these things would come to pass. Right? Because we believe the word. Another generation will pick it up and carry the torch. Right? I'm part of that generation, carrying the torch. Right? Pick it up and carry the torch. Right? And so you the, as I said to you, what people don't understand about war is this, right? When the first world war started, America was not in it. Right? The same thing with the Second World War. It wasn't started, the America was not in it. But America had an alliance with Great Britain, which is to say that if anybody trouble you, right, I will come and help you. Right? And so, that was the reason why America had to get involved with it. Okay? Now, fortunately, or unfortunately, I don't know. Because they said Ukraine intended to become a NATO um, country. And this is where the whole thing is, 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 is crumbling. Okay? Because Russia said, and then, it's a, and not over my dead body, it's not going to happen. Right? It's not going to happen. Okay? And the European Union said, why not? We will take them. We will take them. But if, if, if Ukraine were a NATO country, America would have to defend it physically because that is a treaty. That is the agreement. So if, they, if it was Germany was being attacked, America would have to go up to uh, uh, um, help them. And the case, well, I'm not sending my soldiers or whatever because they all have that agreement. And I'm saying they couldn't say to them, but it would be a breach of trust, if you know what I'm saying. So when England was in trouble, America had to go. Okay? America had to go, and America got themselves in, drawn into this war. And in all these things I'm saying to you, right? I'm, I, Germany and Japan had an agreement. So when America attacked Germany, Japan, at, I said, well, attack America. Because said, Germany is my ally. That's how it goes in war. Everybody have their own allies, and you might not even know who they are. Right? They might have secret alliances with each other, and you might not even know. But when the war breaks out, then you're going to see who is holding on, and, and people are going to be taking sides. Okay, if you touch my friend, you touch me. Right? And you touch my friend, you touch me. And sometimes you're going to find out to yourself, really, after a while, like, who you thought was on your side is not on your side either. You understand? Because that's, as they're talking, they're not going up, they're talking about people who talk to two sides of their mouth because they're acting like your friend on this side and they're acting like friend and I have your enemy. Right? That's it. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so I'm watching the news and I see the representative of Germany goes to the Middle East. She goes to visit Israel and, uh, you know, nice up, nice up. But then she goes over to the, the Palestinian and the same nice up, nice up. So in other words, I'll like, I'll be a friend Israel and I'll be a friend Palestinian. But these two are, are, are enemies. So if there should be a war, you don't know what side they're going to take. You don't know what side they're going to take. Okay? You don't know what side they're going to take. So the Bible tells you. Let me just go to Joel chapter 3. The Bible says here, it says here, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Alright? And the Bible is saying, Proclaim ye among the Gentiles. And this is what has been going on. Some of people have taken this thing for a joke, you know. But like me, we've been teaching the Word of God from when I was 18 years old. Okay? I've taught so many people the Word. Some of my teachers today, they're ministers. So I'm in a pastor and God. 
the things which I've been teaching, I believe them. I'm not one of those persons who, like as time goes on, then it wears off. Truly, it's not a jacket that I'm gonna, gonna wear off and I'm gonna take it and, and put it aside. These things are ingrained in my system, right? Because the Bible said when, when Jesus was born and he came into the temple, you know, the Bible said a man came in there named Simeon. He said he was a devout man and one who waited for the consolation of Israel. I mean, that when you hear that thing, it makes it, it, it tinkles to your, to your body and your spirit. He waited for the consolation of Israel. And the Bible said that the Holy Ghost told him that today you must find yourself in the temple. He doesn't even know exactly why he's going there. But today was be no ordinary day. Be no day like he had ever seen in his life. And when he went there, he saw the, the, the baby Jesus. And the Bible said, he went to the mother and said, please, uh, could, I, could I hold your baby? And she gave him the baby, Mary. And, and then she heard him say, he said, Lord of mercy. He said, Lord, now I can, I can leave this earth. Right? Okay, this is why he said, you said I will not die until I see the consolation of Israel. And now I see. So thank you, Jesus. I mean, not thank you, Jesus, but I'm saying thank you, great Abba Yahweh, or whatever he would say. You know, fulfill. Right? Fulfill. Fulfill. The Bible says he waited. Waited. All his years he was living. He was waiting for something to happen. And I pray God today you're waiting for something to happen. Right? Because something will happen. Right? I keep telling you when I have this program, I don't tell you that next week. I list other people say, I'll see you tomorrow next week. You heard what the president said. By Monday morning, it could be war in this world. And, and you see, this is really one thing I'm telling you about. It's because because of satellite images, they can see what's going on, right? They can see what's going on. But you see, it works out sometimes they're good in that you can see to make preparation, but that doesn't mean you can stop it. And that's because of the kind of war that is being set up in Europe. Because it is set up as a conventional war. Right, with tanks and guns and all these things. But if it were a war with missiles, it could happen and you don't know. Right? It could happen. As they make the plane that they call a stealth plane, they so that it can fly and radar or whatever cannot detect it. Okay? So you could be, be attacked and you don't even know that you're being attacked. Right? You could send missiles and it comes, they say, the problem with this missile they said, that China tested was that they said the thing flies so low to the earth that the radar cannot detect it. You can't tell. You understand? So somebody would have to tell you that something is coming at you. But your enemy is not going to tell you that. Because the enemy wants to hit you by surprise. So, but right now they can see what's going on and what's being mobilized and, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you that, um, of course the man in Ukraine is saying that America is making too much about this thing, of course. Of course he's terrified, of course, because the first person they ever want to kill is him. You see, you would be a fool if you ever try to settle your country to another country. Or you think you are the first person they want to settle up because you are a leader. Once they get away from the leaders, then they can dominate the people, right? So, the Bible says, proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Right? And the scripture does